We photographers tend to associate a motor drive with fast-moving events like a tennis serve or a football game or a car race or a fast-moving model in a fashion shoot. But out here, it's nice and leisurely. A few boats here and there, nothing moving too fast, nothing moving away from you. You really wouldn't expect to need a motor drive out in this situation, or would you? Another thing we photographers tend to associate with this motor drive is the sequence setting. So you can shoot four or five pictures real fast like this. You know, the sequence setting of a motor drive is a, really a valuable asset to have in a motor drive for certain shooting situations, but maybe not the shoots that you would think of right off. Let's take, for example, a tennis serve. Now, if you expect to get the peak of action of a tennis serve with your motor drive set on the sequence mode, you might be very disappointed. A motor drive is not an insurance policy guaranteeing that your camera will fire at just precisely the right moment, like when the tennis racket makes the impact with the ball. Now, let's just say that you're going to shoot a sequence of a tennis serve with your motor drive set to the sequence mode. All right, so you're going to get the toss of the ball, the racket coming back, the racket at the top of the serve, and then just before or after the impact occurs. You've got a better chance of getting that precise moment that the impact occurs, much more than your motor drive does moving the film across the plane as fast as it can. Because you might find that with your motor drive set to the sequence setting, it might be moving the film instead of exposing the film. Well, if a motor drive can't be counted on to capture a fast action like that one, why bother buying one? As I mentioned before, there are perfectly valid reasons for using a motor drive in a shooting situation just like this one, where nothing's really moving very fast, nothing's moving at a breakneck speed. And we're talking about the single mode here and not the sequence function. Let me move a little closer to the water, and I think I can show you what I mean. Here's one of the reasons. Watch this. As I'm shooting, you'll notice that I have to take the camera away from my eye just a little bit to wind the film. Most people do that. But out here in the field when you're shooting, you know there's one thing that's important, and that is what's in the viewfinder. If you can maintain your concentration in what you're shooting, well, your flow of photography will be uninterrupted. Now, that's one of the benefits of a motor drive, is that it frees you of one of the mechanical responsibilities of photography, so you can concentrate on the creative end of photography. In that example of the tennis serve, the motor drive is not going to find the peak moment for you, yet set to single, the motor drive will allow you to take shots and find the peak moment yourself, because your eye never leaves the viewfinder. Let you be ready for the second serve or the volley or whatever comes next. You become more efficient. You can concentrate on your photography. What's the trade-off? Well, I guess a motor drive does add some weight to the camera, and if that's a factor, you might think about looking into a winder. It's not as heavy, it's less expensive, and it runs on batteries instead of a rechargeable NICAD pack like the motor drive uses. The winder's not quite as fast as a motor drive, but the shots that we've been talking about today, I don't think that should matter too much. Now, I think once you've experienced the freedom that a motor drive or a winder can bring to your photography, I don't think there are going to be many times you'll want to be without one.